Okay, I'm going to resume sharing my screen so we can take a look at some of the great work that you all have been working on. Uh, but first, I'm going to pause the Desmos. So if you're still working on it, I'm sorry if this frustrates you, but I'm pausing in five seconds. And now let's take a look. Here's three pictures that I saw. I see some similarities in these first two. Uh, people trying to capture with that outside space that isn't part of the shape. And it looks to me like this person was using two dots to show squares that were completely filled in by the shape and one for those that weren't. This person also partitioned off those that were full squares and then left the partial circles. This one was interesting to me because they found that there's two circles in there and then there was a little bit left over. A couple of other visual ways of doing the problem. Again, found the full square and started to like play with those partial circles. I may have captured these even before you were all finished with your work. Um, I like that this person is showing that there's three full squares, two partials here and two partials here. And then a couple of other examples. You're starting to probably see some patterns here. Um, I like that all of these calculations are what this person was using to try to figure things out. And they were showing that we've got parts of circles. We've got the ratio where they're showing or the radius, not the ratio, the radius that from this, this edge here to the center, it looks like one section or one centimeter, some really good calculating. That these are about 0.75 of the circle and that those can be combined to make three holes. Um, and I think this one, Bernadette, I think this was you. I like the, it looks to me like you're thinking with color coding. So some holes are the dark uh, black and then your partials are the blue. If you were thinking something differently, let me know in the chat. It's just really interesting when you get a group of people to see how the same shape can be uh, approached in lots of different ways. Oh, Bernadette, it wasn't correct. Let me go back. Can you let me know what you were thinking on this? And Aklam, I'm with you. I think that the thinking in that bottom left one was really good too. Bernadette, you can either unmute or just type it in the chat and I can read it out. Oh, oh, it was correct. Okay. So the, the blue was your partials and the, the, the black was your holes, your whole square. Okay. All right, so we've got some differences. I picked up four of these and I want you to notice we've got 6.14, 6, 6, 9.28. We, we've got a range of answers here as far as what the area might be. But I want to really look at the thinking that was behind it more so than the number. Uh, this person said there's already three whole square centimeters. Well, we saw that in our drawings that people were really pulling out those whole squares. Four shapes are part of a circle. If you put them together, it's one circle. So if you have to find the area of a circle by using the equation, A equals pi times radius squared, the answer is 3.14 and that plus three for the whole, I obviously cut this off before this person finished their thinking, um, but they were coming with the idea that those four part circles would equal a whole circle. Uh, this person is saying I counted the full squares and estimated that the curved ones were 0.75 each. Then I multiplied 0.75 by four and added, I got the answer is to three, so I got six. So they combined their three quarter circles became three whole, whole sections. I thought it made sense to give the quarters the number being 0.75, so similar to the last person thinking. And then I multiplied it by four, so I would think the area is around six. And I like that this person is saying, I'm not exactly sure, but I'm estimating here. I divided the shape based on the squares. Then the corner pieces come together to form a circle. I then found the area and added them together. So lots of different ways to approach this work here. 
Uh, before I move you on, let's go back and look here. This question was asking about which shape has the greater area. And I'm going to go ahead and just show some of your classmates' responses. Um, let me see if I can zoom this in a little bit. The answer, by the way, is B. This that looks kind of like a squared off donut um, had the greater area. But it's pretty close. So I can see why Prehensha was thinking it was uh, that one might have been, or A might have been greater. And Angeline and Juliana both had some legitimate thinking for why they're the same, because they're very close and we're estimating. But again, look, Hector and Jawan kind of used the grid there to divide things up. You see, Jeremy had a similar strategy. Francis has got some numbers all over the place, making sense of what. You're seeing there. I like here that Ezra is pointing out that these are the partials and these are the full. Um, you could just see some different kinds of thinking throughout. So we're going to move on to the next screen. Uh, there's two, <clears throat> excuse me, there's two slides for activity one. Here's a new shape with a new scale. This time, instead of it being one centimeter, each length in this is six centimeters. So keep that in mind. And you're using this shape to come up with its area. And then you get to create a shape with a, an area of eight plus four times pi, which you guys have been calculating with pi, but we haven't seen anybody, <clears throat> excuse me, we haven't seen anybody write it this way, that four times pi would be recognizing that relationship with a circle. So try creating a shape with an area of eight plus four times pi square centimeters. This also has a different scale. In this case, it's two centimeters and check your work. I'm going to move you so you can go work on those two screens. And I'm going to unpause you and let you work for about 10 minutes. And I'm going to pause the recording. We will come back to it when it's time to discuss again. All right. So what we've got here is what we, we call these composite shapes where we've put together this square, this quarter circle, and this quarter circle. A composite is just like a, composite, a compound word. It's like compound word like butter and fly. It's two words put together to make one. A composite shape is where we're taking different shapes and putting them together to make one shape. So what's true about this six and six? This is the radius of each. And I want us to go back to what we know about finding area. We know that our formula for area of a circle is equal to pi radius squared. This is the radius, it's six. What would the radius squared be then? In this case, our area, I'm so bad at writing with this tool, this area would be, area is equal to pi times 36, because six times six would be 36. But this is not a whole circle, is it? How much of a circle do we have here? We have half of a circle. And so I'm gonna take that 36 and I'm gonna divide it in half and it's 18. So my area of the circle piece is pi times 18. And go ahead, let's use our calculators. I'm going to use my estimate of or my rounded 3.14 for pi times 18. And I get 56.52. And I want to add this 36 to it. Oops, I didn't add the whole thing. 
56.52 plus the 36 gets me to 92.53. And watch what happens when I hit submit. It filled it all the way up. So I see some of you are adding in the chat what you realize you've done wrong. Uh, some people like use this 12 instead of the 36 and cut it in half. There were some people who um, added instead of multiplied for the area, like lots of little places to make mistakes. Um, and yes, I will keep this video and post it in Google Classroom. If you guys remind me, I can do this every time we, we talk about things in class. I just get caught up with all the screens I'm looking at and I forget. So with that, I hope that that really, really helped and that you guys can now look at this and think about if I have two here and I need to come up with an area of eight plus four times pi, I'm gonna come back here because we didn't write this by pi, but we sort of have it here. Let me erase this formula up here so I can have some space to write. If I was gonna write this in a format that was exactly what the area is without estimating, I would say that this would be 36 plus pi times 18, because what I put over here is an estimate because I use 3.14. If I put pi times 18, this is a much more specific answer and it's written more algebraically. So when they're asking on this next screen, eight plus four times pi, they're just using pi instead of 3.14. So I'm gonna unpause you and let you go fix mistakes you realized on screen three. I'm going to pause this recording so we can come back to it. Don't let me forget to unpause it later. All right, so if I'm reading the question correctly in the chat, it's about the small semicircle. So this part right here, am I correct? All right, let's take a look at how some of your classmates did it. Okay, Aklam, can you uh, use the chat or unmute and tell us why you put this for? I do see your I don't know, but I, I think you've got some really great thinking here for us to explore. What's the for for? Do you mean that it's a fourth of a circle? Oh, each line is four centimeters. Okay. The radius, yeah, okay. So you were looking at this line here and labeling it. That's okay. I thought this was just really interesting. I can tell that you've got these are full squares. This to me looks like a half circle and a half circle, I'm sorry, not half, a quarter, 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 quarter. And then these little ones, let's see how some other people handled that. Uh, Melee, I think that you were the one who asked this and I, I really like your drawing because it looks similar to what I would have done. I think I might be taking this part and this part and trying to make some estimates based on um, what, uh, it appears to leave open in here. It's almost like it's about a third of the circle or a third of the space. Yeah, I might I might do about a third as well. And again, it's estimation. So having a not perfect answer, but as long as it's within the realm, it makes sense. So I'm not gonna leave you all with just like, here's the answer because I want you to keep thinking about it. But there's lots of ways I've seen your classmates divide this shape up um and make sense of it and there and there's no one right way 
Ezra, you do much better with these drawing tools than I do. Look at how nice and neat that is. Really good. Okay, well, it is 1.20 and it is time for you all to head off to um, third period. 